Hey guys, I'm quickly gonna go over these water brushes with you and give you a better idea about how you can use them and how to really take care of them so they last you a long time. I've been using these for about two years now, so I learned a few things along the way, like what to do if you leave ink inside for about a week. So let's get started. Here are the three sizes they come in, a small, medium, and large. The small one is perfect for little letters and tight spots. The medium one is what I use most often with my brush letters that are about one to two inches in height. And the large one is great for big areas and large, thicker letters over two inches in height. There are a few different ways you can use these brushes, but the most popular ones are you can dip your brush or you can fill it. So let's dive right in and check them out. All right, so let's start filling our brush with ink. I use regular black India ink. I buy it in a big bottle since I go through a lot of it. And you can fill the brush right from there. It has like a little spout, but it gets a little bit messy. So what I do is fill this little old jar I have um, with the ink and then I take an eyedropper and fill it that way because it's a little bit less messy, although messes still happen, so be very careful. Um, because ink stains a lot. So don't do it over any furniture that's precious to you. I would do it over the sink or some paper towels. And then when you're done filling it, just put the brush tip back on and make sure it's nice and tight because once you start squeezing, you don't want that ink all over you. And then start by gently squeezing the brush. And you don't want to squeeze too hard, but you don't want to just not squeeze at all. So just kind of find that middle squeeze and start testing it out on a little piece of paper to see if you have any flow of ink. Once you see a drop like that, um, you've got good flow. <laughs> Once you have good ink flow, don't press too hard anymore, just a little bit every once in a while while you see it getting dry. Um, when you see it getting dry. So when you're lettering and you start seeing that it's a little bit dry like that, see I should have already been pressing a little bit um, at the first L um, to keep getting the ink flow instead of letting it go dry and then having to go over it. So you're gonna have to experiment with how much to press and when to press. And if you don't want to fill your brush with ink, you can simply dip it. Just grab your ink and dip your brush in it. In this case, you wouldn't fill the brush with water or anything else. You don't want to dilute your ink. Uh, just keep dipping it when you run low. Although, if you fill your brush with um, pink color and then dip it into blue, you can create this blended purple effect. The most popular way to use these brushes is with watercolors. And what you do is fill the brush with water and then just use any watercolors you have with it. There's no need for a giant jar of water anymore, especially when you're on the go. So again, you just unscrew the tip and then fill the reservoir with water. So you just take a drop or two and get your watercolors wet and then just start painting. I love this method the most because I can make so many colors with the watercolor paints and also easily get some painting done while sitting on the couch with the kids. No messes because no water jar means less chance of them spilling it. And I have a towel next to me to wipe the brush clean when I want to use a different color. So you would just squeeze the water out. Um, let the color run a little bit and then just wipe it on the paper towels. If you want to fill your brush with watercolors, it's perfectly doable as well. The easiest way is to get some liquid watercolors like Dr. P.H. Martin's concentrated watercolors and just put a few drops in the brush. You can mix different colors together to make more colors and add a bit of water to dilute it if it's too vibrant for you. And then just mix it a little bit, um, squeeze a little bit, oops, not too much, uh, and paint away. Here's another little thing you can do with these brushes when you fill them with just water. If you want that watercolor look but don't have watercolors, you can do it with markers. And it works with most markers out there except the ones that are permanent, like Sharpies. So it works like this. Take two colors next to each other, preferably colors that will make a nice color when mixed. So I'll use a pink and blue to make a purple. And I'll just show you a Crayola marker as well. 
and then just take your brush and blend them together. So you would take your brush filled with water and then just start blending. So um, apply the water just kind of in the middle to blend them together. And that's it. You can see that it looks like it was done in watercolors, right? And it's a great technique if you're out somewhere or on a road trip and you don't have watercolors next to you in the car, um, this is a perfect way to do it.